slide. Thank you very much indeed. It's a real pleasure uh, to address such a distinguished uh, audience. Uh, though I wish it was at some other time. I mean, this is, I guess, what's happening for a great on shift. Uh, and I have the dubious uh, pleasure of uh, kicking off uh, this particular session straight after lunch when everyone feels a little tired and drowsy and maybe uh, jam that. Uh, but uh, there we are. I'll do my very best uh, to keep you from uh, falling asleep. Um, the, the topic uh, of my presentation is border crossing and contemporary Asian studies. And I'll talk about a bit uh, about uh, recent developments in, in Germany and then focus uh, on what's been going on at uh, my own institute. Uh, the German um, um, Institute of Global and Paleo Studies. And I should really start with this display because I think I've been advertised uh, as someone representing uh, GIGA, uh, University of Hamburg. And I should mention that GIGA and the University of Hamburg are not the same thing. GIGA is not part of the University of uh, Hamburg. Uh, uh, while I am affiliated with the university as a professor, uh, GIGA is an independent uh, social science based uh, research institute based in Hamburg. Uh, and it has a couple of uh, links with uh, the University of Pepper, as it has with uh, numerous other universities uh, in Germany and, and beyond. Actually, we would like to put uh, all of the eggs into one basket. Uh, we really like to, to cooperate with uh, numerous other universities. Uh, Hamburg University, obviously, for geographical reasons, uh, being our sort of prime uh, cooperation partner. I also got to start with an apology, uh, really. And the apology being that I can't really address all the questions uh, that have been raised um, and that are supposed to be answered in this session. Uh, the reason uh, being that uh, I was originally scheduled to speak in session three, uh, which is all about uh, interdisciplinary collaboration. But as you will uh, see in a few minutes, uh, actually there isn't that much going on in terms of interdisciplinary uh, collaboration at my particular uh, institute. And so I'm all the more interested in, in what uh, uh, colleagues will say about how interdisciplinary collaboration works in their particular uh, institution. Uh, just a few more announcements because uh, before I get off to get into the real thing, uh, there will be no, no PowerPoints, um, no PPTs, and uh, I hope you don't be too disappointed. You might even feel relieved uh, by saying that. And I won't read the paper because while it's short, it's actually far too long uh, for, for, for this uh, uh, session. So what I'm going to try to do instead is to really give you an idea of the gist of the paper, sort of the, the essence of it, without you know, uh, being essentialist, I guess. So what, what was the argument? Actually, I'm not quite sure there is an argument in the, the paper. Uh, but it certainly does proceed in uh, a number of steps, actually three steps. Uh, first, I'm, I'm talking a bit uh, in the paper about the uh, situation of uh, Asian studies, the Asian studies uh, more broadly in Germany, just 10 years ago. Uh, and it could, have, uh, it, could, uh, it could be argued that uh, Asian studies and Asian studies more specifically uh, were in a state of crisis back then. Or maybe crisis is, is, is too much of a word, but certainly uh, Asian studies and Asian studies in particular were under pressure. Uh, under pressure because there uh, had been numerous uh, sort of uncoordinated uh, cost-cutting initiatives at the uh, local level, uh, and that is at the university level, and they were affecting uh, uh, Asian studies uh, to, to, to quite a substantial uh, degree. So th there was really the, the danger that the uh, solid foundation of area studies and Asian studies more specifically in Germany would get steadily diminished uh, as a consequence of this uh, repeated uncoordinated cost-cutting initiatives at the local level. And in the paper, I give you a couple of reasons uh, why the situation was so dire uh, back then. But I don't want to depress you. Uh, so I'm not going to, going to get into, into the reasons, uh, structural, temporal, ideational, uh, why the situation was as it was uh, 10 years ago. So I would rather focus um, on the, the, what it looks like uh, now, uh, 2014. And indeed, uh, one would suggest that the picture is much, much uh, brighter. Um, Asian studies, in particular those that have focused on Japan, China, Korea, and Southeast Asia, look more healthy than, than, than ever. And of course, that raises the question why is that? Um, while many facts have not changed um, compared to 10 years ago, a number of things have changed. And uh, let me just mention some of the, the uh, factors uh, at, at work. Um, one thing is, that uh, there has been a virtual spending spree uh, on uh, uh, research and education uh, in, in Germany. Uh, so relevant spending has been uh, prioritized. There has been uh, the uh, Joint Excellence, uh, Excellence Initiative, which started in 2009, 
2006 and will be going on until 2017. Uh, the, uh, at the federal level and at the lender uh, level, some up to, I think, 5 billion euros uh, have been provided uh, to uh, for research and education. Much of that money has been going into the uh, natural sciences. Uh, but uh, social sciences and the humanities have uh, also benefited uh, substantially. Uh, funding has been provided for a number of, uh, um, sort of research clusters, graduate schools, um, and also universities that have been, um, uh, have been able to attract funding for at least one research cluster and one uh, graduate school uh, could also obtain uh, additional top-up funding to become a so-called university of excellence. Right, uh, and this might sound familiar in career actually, I think. Uh, so that, but now there, there's some kind of, I think, 11 <coughs> such excellence uh, universities uh, in, in Germany. And funding has also been provided uh, for, for Asian studies, for example, for a research cluster on Asian Europe and the context of Heidelberg University, uh, for a graduate school of East Asia, says it's uh, Free University of Berlin, uh, and so on. There's also been funding uh, for non university institutes uh, like, like, like ours, the Institute of uh, Global, uh, German to Global Area uh, Studies. So, that, that's one main, main, main thing that has happened in the meantime. Uh, much more money has become available. Uh, the, fact, the second thing is that there has been some sort of reappraisal of area studies uh, in, 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 in Germany. Uh, in particular, there has been a paper by the German Council of Science and Humanities in 2006, and that gave a general, a general positive assessment of area studies. Uh, it, among other things, it suggested that regionally and thematically focused interdisciplinary area research, that, that uh, uh, would offer particular high levels of uh, performance, uh, it was also argued that uh, interdisciplinary sense of area studies uh, are sort of the most productive option to cluster and integrate uh, area studies at the university uh, level. Uh, and there was also uh, mentioning uh, being, being made on the need to emphasize methods uh, training. That is, uh, that there should be close links between area and disciplinary uh, competence. So, uh, we've had to see more money, uh, we've seen a reappraisal of our area studies. Uh, and third, and then finally, we have seen a, a new federal initiative to promote area studies, including uh, Asian studies. That's an initiative uh, called Strengthening and Advancing Area Studies. It was launched in 2009 uh, by the Federal Ministry of Research and Education. Um, and uh, Asian uh, studies has um, benefited disproportionately uh, from, from this uh, initiative. Um, and I'm We'll not be going through the, the list of all the uh, sort of competence networks uh, and university initiatives that have benefited uh, from, uh, from that funding. You will find that all in the paper, right? Uh, you might even say that the paper is sort of an annotated links, top, annotated list of hyperlinks. So all the hyperlinks, uh, the direct links, will lead you to the various initiatives uh, that have been funded uh, by, by the ministry uh, in terms of uh, competence networks and university initiatives. Uh, so, uh, the time is slowly running out. Let me get into, into the, um, what might, it might actually be the core part of the paper. And that is where I'm looking at some of the initiatives for initiatives at university and research institute, the level with respect to Asian studies. And I see three major approaches uh, uh, to, uh, to really focusing or recalibrating uh, Asian studies in, in, in Germany. So, uh, first approach basically consists of refocusing and strengthening a limited number of neighboring disciplinary approaches to research, teaching, graduate uh, training, uh, be it in the social sciences or the humanities, but focus really on a limited number of disciplinary approaches in one center, right? Um, and there are various stages and state centers of that that come, and I give some examples of that uh, in the paper. The second approach has had a sort of broader uh, disciplinary um, uh, focus. So a broad array of uh, multidisciplinary approaches are reflected in these uh, Asian Studies uh, centers. And again, in, in the paper, I, I give you, sorry, the, 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 already on page five, sorry, um, the paper. Um, so, um, so a number of, of centers have been uh, set up or new, newly uh, refocused being sort of more multidisciplinary. Uh, Character. And again, I give some examples uh, in, in the paper. The third approach uh, to recalibrating patient studies uh, has been to uh, thematically refocus, again, a limited 
number of disciplinary approaches to Asian studies, while engaging at the same time in cross-area studies beyond uh, Asia. And this approach actually embodied uh, by my own institute, the uh, Joint Institute of uh, Global and uh, Asia Studies. So, uh, GIGA basically emerged in uh, 2006 out of the restructuring of the uh, German Overseas Institute, uh, which had been in operation since 1964, so actually we celebrate our 50th anniversary uh, this year. Currently, we have something like uh, 160 staff members, including 90 uh, academics. So, academics at the Institute, they carry out the research at four regional institutes. So, we have, we have institutes on Asia, Africa, Latin America, and the Middle East. However, uh, our institute also has a, a matrix structure. It might be one of the few organizations actually worldwide with a functioning uh, matrix uh, structure. And that means basically that all researchers are not affiliated only with uh, not just with one of the regional institutes, but they're also affiliated with one of the cross cutting, comparison uh, oriented uh, research programs uh, at the institute. And we have four such uh, cross cutting uh, research programs. Um, entitled Legitimacy and Efficiency of Political Systems, so that case is comparative politics, uh, violence and security, that basically deals with peace and conflict uh, studies with a comparative ban, socio-economic development in the context of globalization, that's where some of the development studies uh, and uh, the macroeconomics uh, specialists uh, are sort of uh, based. And then we have also a cross-cutting uh, program on international relations and, and uh, global governance. So team hiring uh, for, for the institute takes place on a joint uh, basis. Uh, the regional institute on one hand and the cross-cutting uh, research program um, on, on the other hand. Uh, what this has led to is, is basically uh, greater coherence uh, of the uh, institute's uh, research profile. And it should be said that uh, we are, and that's our basic identity, a social science-based uh, research uh, institute. Uh, it gets even worse. I think two thirds of our researchers are political scientists. Uh, so that, that, that makes it uh, um, rather, I uh, could say, uh, coherent. Uh, I could also say, uh, more critically, a bit monodisciplinary. Uh, but it certainly uh, helps uh, to bring uh, to together uh, uh, people like my colleagues working on similar topics with different methodological approaches and theoretical dispositions. So the basic idea uh, you have can be summed up as sort of disciplinary concentration combined with theoretical and methodological pluralism. Border crossing, because that was one of the uh, 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 things mentioned in my title, border crossing at the IGA basically means uh, crossing sort of the border of, borders of world regions. So within the uh, research programs and the research teams that are affiliated with research uh, programs, we always have people working on different world regions. Africa, Asia, Latin America, um, and the Middle East. Uh, and for us, uh, this has uh, certainly uh, worked out. Uh, and there are a number of reasons why we prefer uh, this uh, sort of cross-regional uh, approach uh, from a sort of narrow disciplinary perspective, if you will, uh, to uh, more interdisciplinary um, activities, because our experience has been that uh, what, what is usually called interdisciplinary collaboration or uh, transdisciplinary collaboration often boils down to mere uh, multidisciplinary conversations, right, with uh, limited uh, analytical value. Um, that there might be exceptions to the rule, or it might be just better organized in some other places, but it just has been our uh, experience. So, uh, as I said, here stands for social science based area studies and comparative uh, area studies. And I guess this, this might be called our sort of you know, unique uh, selling point that, that we engage in these uh, comparative uh, uh, approaches, uh, be they uh, in, intra, inter, or cross regional uh, comparisons. Uh, we believe that, that uh, comparative uh, area studies um, um, have a couple of, uh, of uh, benefits and, and, and that they do add value. And I don't want to bore you with, with the, the laundry list of what we see as sort of the advantages of this approach of comparative area studies. So I just refer you to page seven and eight uh, of my, my paper, uh, where I list uh, the, uh, um, the, um, the particular advantage, advantages as, as, as we see them when it comes to comparative uh, area studies. Basically, uh, what we're saying is that uh, comparative area studies 
uh, can be seen as a sort of missing link uh, between globally generalizing cross-country studies on the one hand and individualizing empirically thick case studies uh, on the other. So, to sum up, um, I would suggest this combination of social science-based area studies and comparative area studies has really worked out well uh, for Giga. But remember, Giga is a hierarchically and vertically integrated non-university uh, research institute. So this particular approach that we have taken might not be suitable uh, for other organizations or, or research networks. Because what works well in one context uh, might be due to failure uh, in another. For, more fundamentally, um, I believe that there, there, there's, there are, I, I think there's a ground to believe that there is no ideal or no sort of best approach uh, to conducting Asian studies or Asian studies uh, more broadly. But indeed, I would suggest that individual organizations have to search for their own particular uh, equilibria, ephemeral as these might be. And let me close on that note. Thank you.